the real fun of episode three is the fact that it connects all the dots. For finally, you can see how episode one relates to episode six and how they all come together. A lot of the people that have followed the Star Wars saga over these years will, will obviously be interested in how Anakin becomes the man in suit. And action! I'm not the Jedi that I should be. I want more, but I know I shouldn't. And cut. I think you can be a little bit more stronger on that, not moody. And I think when you, when you say, I want more, but I know I shouldn't, mm -hmm. you can turn away. You know, I want more, but I, so, so I know I, so when you're saying, I know I shouldn't, you're turning away. I know I shouldn't. You know, you gotta remember this is one movie and it's meant to be seen one through six. So I think when you watch the actual movie in order, the story will become very clear that Anakin is the chosen one. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. You believe it's this boy? And even when Anakin turns into Darth Vader, he is still the chosen one. Uh, when you're a kid, you know, it's, he's, he's the pinnacle of all evil. There is that mystery there, you know. He is, he is a man behind a mask. And up until now, we didn't know who that man was. So it allows, you know, the audience to really instill their own imagination and into that character and make that evil whatever they want it to be. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive. There will be more depth, though, to, to that evil because it's, it's not a, a conscious, you know, choice that he's made. Darth Vader became such an icon in the first film, episode four, that that icon of evil sort of took over everything, much more than I intended. If it had been one movie, that wouldn't have happened. He would have been revealed to be this pathetic character at the end of the movie. Uh, but now by adding episodes one, two, and three, people begin to see the tragedy of Darth Vader as, as what it was originally intended to be. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take it away! And I like the idea that the person you thought was the villain is really the victim. And uh, that the story is really about the villain trying to regain his humanity. It becomes really the story of Darth Vader's redemption. The sort of transition into the dark side was where I was wanting to go from the very get-go. And, uh, and I wasn't really sure at the time why I was being asked to pull back, but you know, now I understand it's because it, you know, it has to take place at very specific points in this film. There's always this good in you. Yeah. at this point. Yeah. The good part is saying, what am I doing? And the bad part is saying, I'm doing this for Padme, I'm doing this for us, and we can be, we can, it'll be better for the universe, it'll be better for everybody. You know, but there's always this little part in you is saying, what am I doing? I chose an actor who has that presence of the dark side to, to work with, uh, as opposed to somebody who's very lighthearted and funny and trying to get him to have an undercurrent of dark side all the time. And um, Hayden's been very good at that. And so then you're, you're very strong on that. It's, it's almost said with not, a little bit of anger, a tinge of, you know, I will, you know, determination and anger. I will not betray the Republic. You know, my loyalties, so that you're turning on, but it's, you know, it's like a, I will not betray the Republic. That's, you kind of, that's your rationalization for everything you've done. Oh, Anakin, what are you gonna do? I will not betray the Republic. Nobody who's evil thinks of themselves as evil. My loyalties lie with the Chancellor. They always believe they're doing good, even though they're not. Uh, and so uh, it's a matter of how does a person who is good turn to becoming an evil person? Well, he is under a lot of stress after all. Where we left him in episode two, he was consumed by conflicting emotions, uh, his love for Padme, a resentment of his Jedi obligations, uh, you know, and the restrictions that that placed on his life. A feeling that he was being held back. A lust for power, uh, w which was really magnified by his mother's death. Um, and, and a fear, which is important. A fear that such an occurrence could happen again. As a very wise man once said, fear... Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. When we find him in episode three, he's still very much enveloped by these same tormenting feelings, feelings that, you know, the Jedi aren't affording him enough respect. You're on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. 
What? Very prominent, rising disillusionment. You know, as you start complaining. There's got to be a little bit of anger behind it, a little bit of frustration. Okay. And action. Sometimes I wonder what's happening to the Jedi Order. I think this war is destroying the principles of the Republic. This war represents a failure to listen. Now you're closer to the Chancellor than anyone. Please ask him to stop the fighting and let the diplomacy resume. Don't ask me to do that. His life has become more complicated. And this all culminates in, in, into an anger, compounded by changing relationships with both Palpatine and Obi-Wan. I mean, he's, he begins to question the Jedi as a whole, uh, but especially Obi-Wan. Anakin's relationship with Palpatine is one of deference and seduction. He lures Anakin into a very impressionable state. I have rewritten, I spent the whole weekend rewriting the scene between you and Palpatine, um, where you turn. Yeah. And I've added some more to that. Uh, I've stretched it out a bit and made it a little bit, given you a little bit more to, to go on in terms of him pulling you in. I hope you trust me, Anakin. Of course. I need your help, son. He uh, pulls each string with such charming yet evil precision. You wanted to see me, Chancellor? Yes, Anakin, come closer. I have good news. It happens once the Emperor starts to work on him and make him doubt things, make him doubt his relationship to the Jedi, make him doubt what is good in the universe. He throws out the possibility that he could keep his wife and save her from death. These are all seduction things, which causes a great deal of turmoil in Anakin. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. This is where he finally succumbs uh, to the influence of the devil. Anakin has turned to the dark side. The Obi-Wan-Anakin fight is an amazing battle. I've already been knighted, if you will, Darth Vader. Darth Vader's fighting style is, is much more aggressive and, and much more brutal than Anakin's. I think that the end fight where Anakin and Obi-Wan try to resolve their differences, Obi-Wan comes out with, with the better hand. But I think that's a, a result or, you know, derivative of, of Anakin's emotions and not being able to focus them and control them, which is just, you know, the root uh, of, of Anakin's inabilities. You underestimate my power! Don't try it! Gotta jump down, and we could do it in two pieces. Okay. He's got to jump down, and as he comes over, he's got to cut him. Yeah, and then he's got to go. Then we can do the second piece where he lands and rolls down. Okay. You want to do that, or you want to have a stunt guy do that? Uh, I'll do it if you'd like me to. Well, that's up to you. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's kind of rolling sideways in the dirt. Well, if you think you'll see my face and it's worth having me do it, then probably I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take four, be mine. Yeah. And action! Don't ask me, Anakin! Said you would destroy the Sith, not join them! And cut! You can do that little turn and you look back. If we move more of it as you were going up the hill, so that if he does, when he bursts into flames and stuff, it's not like you're standing right next to him. It's important in the end that you see the physical transformation of Anakin into this burnt up crisp because that's the, the suffering he had to live with for the rest of his life. To me, I really wanted to show that there was some severe damage. You know, there was a lot of stuff, a lot of bad stuff had happened to him and uh, that had kind of formed him. You know, Vader, all Vader's experiences have formed him into what he becomes. We get to do stuff that I've basically been imagining since I was a kid. So this is the burnt Anakin stroke Vader makeup uh, on Hayden Christensen. And this is what's going to bridge the transformation between Anakin and, uh, and Darth Vader. Oh my wow. god! <laughs> Look at this. Oh god! What's really freaky so is that your eyebrows and your eyes, yeah. <laughs> that you're in there. It's the one that's nice. <laughs> that's, a, that's a scene all the fans are waiting for. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to come out of that pit looking like this. Yeah. Another prosthetic was, it was my first time you know, having, having to you know, be burned. <laughs> Slide down this way, keep coming down, and then you're gonna put your feet up here. Yeah, up there on that. 
set. And action! We know from Return of the Jedi what he looks like, so we use that as our model, that he's been all burned up in a volcano. And that was in, say, the original backstory. I felt it was important that we actually see that happen so that we could see the consequences of these bad things that he did. Anakin, you're breaking my heart. You're going down a path I can't follow. Because of Obi-Wan. Because of what you've done, what you plan to do. He forces his friends to turn against him, which is heartbreaking. You were the chosen one! Obviously, one of the key elements in episode three is that we see him actually put into the Iron Lung. The mask finally close on him, that now he's a, an artificial man, but we know what's inside of it. And I think it's a new part to four, five, and six that people haven't seen yet. The man in the suit comes into being a more personalized character than what he was originally. I'm aware that there was a, f a fair amount of hysteria on set when, uh, uh, when I first emerged as Darth Vader. You look just like Darth Vader. It's quite something. I can't even necessarily articulate how it, how it made me feel. Lord Vader, can you hear me? And that part was, was very empowering. Yes, Master. A memory that uh, won't leave me in the near future. The prophecy is that Anakin will bring balance to the Force and destroy the Sith. He becomes Darth Vader. Darth Vader does become the hero. Darth Vader does destroy the Sith meaning himself and the Emperor. He does it because he is redeemed by his son. So, you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. So the prophecy is true. And by doing that, he redeems himself and goes from being Darth Vader back to being Anakin again. You were right about me. Tell your sister, you were right. Everybody thought of Darth Vader as this big evil guy that you know, had no heart, he was just evil. Um, but in the end, it's not that at all. And it, I mean, here's a guy who has lost everything. I mean, he believes that he's the chosen one. He's not doing wrong things knowing that it's having a negative impact. So there is there is that sort of naivety to him uh, now that, that wasn't there before. And it makes him more human in a lot of ways. 